Hey there, keepers. First of all, let me say 300 subscribers. Wow, thank you so much. I wanna thank all of you for subscribing to my channel and for showing so much interest in what it's like to be a lighthouse keeper. I'm, uh, I never, I, I don't know what I assumed when I started this channel. I don't know what I thought I would get for followers or subscribers or anything like that. But 300 subscribers, wow, I am I'm so happy. Thank you to each and every one of you for subscribing to my channel. So in today's video, I thought I would give you guys a look at where I live. So I'll give you a little bit of context as to the way it kind of works. When you're a lighthouse keeper and you're assigned a permanent position on a station, you're given a dwelling to reside in. And that dwelling is up to you to furnish and set up how you want because essentially you're the one who's going to be living there. So it's kind of like if you're renting a house, it's the same kind of idea except you're not paying rent. If somebody else owns the house, obviously the Coast Guard owns the house or the Crown owns the house, whoever it is that, you know, the higher ups that be, they're the ones that actually own the house and you're just living in it. Now, as a relief keeper, it's a little bit different because your term, your short term, you don't necessarily, you're not given a station where you're living there on a more permanent basis. So you, it's kind of like you're staying in someone else's house. And so what happens is the person who's living in the house regularly will uh, go off station for whatever their reason is. And then you would go and you would stay in their house while they're away. Now the Coast Guard does provide a certain amount of things like a bed, and bedding and, and these sort of things for relief keepers. And there's even some stations that have three houses instead of two. They'll have a principal house and assistant house and then what they call a crew house. And the crew house is for when there's people who come to the island who have work to do, whether it's working on the buildings or working on the engines or doing the solar power or doing whatever it is. There's lots of times that we have work crews that come onto the station and they end up having to stay somewhere because it's not like you can just get a hotel or something. They actually need to stay on the station. Now, the situation that I'm in here, Boat Bluff has two, two houses. There's the principal house and then the assistant keeper's house. Now, the assistant keeper who was here, he started getting shuffled around as what happens when you want to become a principal. You need to go out and do relief principal work so that you can get training on the job training as to how to become a principal keeper. And so for the last year or so, the house has been rotating through um, many different relief keepers. He did get a permanent position as principal on another station. So we've spent actually the last few months, me and the principal here, we've spent the last few months packing up all of his, his things and getting it all ready to go onto a boat to now ship to his new station. So my house is kind of in disarray because uh, most of the furnishings in the house were this other keeper stuff. And now with it all packed, it's very sparse. And um, so it's not the way it's going to be finished because if I do end up getting this station as a permanent station, I'm going to need to furnish this place Otherwise, uh, we'll clean the house up and get it all good and ready to go for whoever does end up being at the station on a more permanent basis. So why don't we go and we'll take a look, we'll give you a little quick tour through the house and you can take a look at how a lighthouse keeper lives. So this is what I would call the front of the house and uh, this door is actually the basement door. We'll go around to the front door so we have to go up these stairs and this is our front door welcome home so the front door leads into our kitchen and the kitchen is a fairly simple setup just a general kitchen we have a pantry here for keeping some dry goods we have a refrigerator which we have a calendar to tell us uh, our tender days because our tender is very important. 
We have the uh, counter, some cupboards, the kitchen sink. You can see my view out the kitchen window is not bad. And then of course we have our stove and a microwave. Pretty simple setup. So I always thought that this living room was kind of set up weird. It's kind of on the wrong side of the house. I think it should be on the other side, which is actually the water side, but it's not. It's on the facing the bluff side. Anyway, you know, I didn't buy it, build the house. Uh, the house was actually built in 1968, so it is a fairly old house. But um, yeah, whoever designed the layout did a kind of a kind of did it backwards in my opinion. Anyway, our living room, uh, all this furniture here is the station furniture. It's not, uh, it's none of the stuff from the original keeper. So it's all kind of like cast off stuff. The chair was the uh, old principal's, his old chair, he got a new one. So he brought this one over here. The table's pretty, that's my model table where I do all my building and whatnot. The treadmill in behind also was the principal keepers at one point and uh, yeah so this is kind of the living room. The view is pretty nice. It's, uh, it does look out onto the helicopter pad but it's still a, a pretty nice view. You get a good look at the water. It's, uh, it's not too bad. On the other side of this large space is kind of the dining area and there's a table here. This table will leave because this is the uh, the original assistance table and then when this is out of here uh, I don't know I don't have a table <laughs> so we'll see what happens there and then of course there's a closet this closet is sort of just uh, general storage some blankets and paper and, and whatnot and then uh, the window leading into the kitchen this is like a pass-through so I'm guessing for the dining area, you could pass the food through. I don't know. I don't think it's, I don't know who does kitchens like that anymore, but it is what it is. And then uh, all my models that I uh, have put aside for building. So why don't we go take a look at the uh, bedrooms, which are on this top level. So this would be bedroom one and as you can see it's a little bit empty at the moment uh, it's just got a couple of things in here again these are sort of cast offs there's a, a dresser it's a little bit wobbly an old chair it's old <laughs> and there's a, um, a queen size bed frame or a bed header but no bed or bed frame to go with it this is sort of the, the primary bedroom. This is, from what I've been told, this is usually where the assistant sets up his bedroom. Uh, it has a great view, but other than that, it's just kind of a square room. So this would be the bedroom that I'm using currently, and it's, uh, it's exactly the same size as the other bedroom. It's just on the other side of the house, so it's kind of backwards. Now this one does have a better closet than the other one. The other one has a closet sort of cutting into the bathroom. This one has the closet cutting into the dining area. So it actually is a little bit of a bigger closet and I kind of prefer this room over the other one. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. So this room comes with a nightstand, kind of a lamp, and it has a double bed. I think they call it a twin. It's not a queen size, it's a little smaller. And then there's the uh, computer desk and a work area for, you know, me editing my videos for you. And then there's our closet. So again, it has a fairly decent view, except in this room, uh, this window here looks exactly at the principal keeper's house. And the last room that we have upstairs is the bathroom and it's a pretty standard bathroom nothing that you would be excited about it has a shower on the one side has your mirror and your sink and then your toilet and your uh, wood shavings you may be wondering why we have some wood shavings in the bathroom well, it's not a regular toilet, it's actually a compost toilet. And I will be doing an episode about that later to let you know how this awesome toilet 
actually works. So what we'll do now is we'll head downstairs and take a look at what we have in our basement. So as we go down the stairs, we actually have this door here, which is on the landing. And this is probably our primary door. We use this door more than any other. And this door is the one that heads out to the deck and then down to the radio house. So we do go in and out this door very often every single day. Continuing down the stairs, we have a few things here, just some work-related stuff, and then heading downstairs. So this area of the downstairs is essentially what I would call the service area. This is where all the stuff that the house needs to do its daily functions is sort of set up. We have our water filtration system in the corner. We have our power box here. We have our recycling over here so that uh, we don't have to walk all the way to the recycle shed. We can put everything here. When these bags are full, we bring them over to the recycle shed. We have our compost toilet here. And uh, this is kind of an interesting one. This guy here, this is our telephone. Inside this is where all the equipment is to work our radio telephone. It's not a regular phone where you just you know dial up and make a phone call. It does all its phone calls over radio waves. So kind of an interesting setup. Everything is inside this box and obviously is needed to communicate with the Coast Guard. This area of the basement is essentially the workshop and where you know where you would do sort of primary functions for anything kind of work related. Now I've sort of taken over this bench for my painting. And when I do all my model painting and everything down here, I have my airbrush and a few other things. But there are still lots of screws and other sort of daily things that we need for station operations. There is a large workshop downstairs uh, off the dock. So most of the tools and everything are there. But if I were to bring all my personal tools and whatnot to the station, I would set everything up here as my own sort of personal uh, workshop area. There is also a large deep freeze, which you can see there for storing food long term. And there is a second refrigerator here as well for, again, for having extra food around and whatnot. And there's tons of storage in, uh, in these large storage cabinets here and here for whatever you may need. Now, I've been emptying them out and getting rid of all the things that we don't need so that whoever does happen to come into this house on a permanent basis is coming into a very clean and a very empty house that they can then make their own. Also in the downstairs we have a wash area and we have our washer, our dryer and our sink for doing laundry or for doing whatever cleaning uh, that we have to do within the house just like you would anywhere. Also in this area we have a little room here. This is what they call the, uh, the second pantry and this is a room that is just shelving and you can use this room for filling up canned goods for filling up jars filling up whatever you want you can fill this whole place up and you're good for years on the station without having to do any groceries there is one last room downstairs and this is the third bedroom and I actually really like this room it's um, it's actually the only room in the house that has carpeting which if you're a carpeting kind of guy then it's nice but it's how to say it's it's the kind of room it's away from everything else it's downstairs and in sort of the corner of the house you still have a decent view out the window you get a good view of the channel and it has a little tiny closet on this side it has enough room uh, generally you would have like a desk or a table over in this side and then uh, there's another sort of closet area off to that side that you can put things and whatnot. So it's actually a really great room. And since there's no uh, crew house here, this room would be set up for, 
your relief workers or your crew when you have a crew on the station they're the ones who would end up staying down here and they'd be able to use the fridge downstairs for their goods and then you could set up a hot plate or something on the table here if they wanted to cook or they could go upstairs and use your kitchen so yeah this is kind of a great room i was uh i was thinking when i first got into the house i'm thinking ah maybe i want this room this room is also because it's in the basement it's a little cooler in the summer than the rooms upstairs so I don't know still I haven't decided yet if I do end up staying here permanently maybe I'll choose this room and of course we leave the door out the basement and then we're back to the front of the house and uh, this leads right up to the helicopter pad. We can watch the helicopters come in and land, no problem. And that would be where I live as a lighthouse keeper. Now on the stations, there's I believe there's only about six different floor plans. So most of the houses are very similar. They all kind of have the same sort of floor layout. And I've seen, uh, I've seen four different layouts now that I've been to two stations. I've seen four layouts, but I hear there's only like six. So the houses all tend to be very similar in um, in style and in, in size. Some are three bedrooms, some are four bedroom houses. So I hope you enjoyed that little look into how I live in my isolation and what my house looks like. If you have any ideas for me to decorate my house, if I do end up being here permanently, please let me know. Use the comment section below and tell me what you think would look really good in this little house and what kind of changes you would make if this was a house that you were going to be living in for several years to come. I'd like to once again thank you so much for subscribing to my channel and if you haven't subscribed yet feel free to subscribe now and I will bring you more content on what it's like to be a modern day lighthouse keeper. My name is Spence and I am a modern day lighthouse keeper. Thank you so much for watching this video and we'll see you next time.